dun 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 I have not touched it since last episode, so we're going to pick up right where we left off, which is finishing off the cables. Uh, oh, and we got to do the uh, chapter symbol, or the league symbol. But we got all sorts of little details going on. Uh, I've spent way too much time on this model, more than I wanted to, but we're having fun, right? My my mic working? Yeah, my mic's working. <laughs> I wasn't sure if my mic was working. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's get things started. Let's just quickly finish off those little cables. We're going to do just a quick little highlight on them. For that, I'm going to use uh, Skaven Blight Dinge. And where, do I got another green around? Or gray? Yeah, I guess I can just use Celestra Gray. Yeah, we'll probably just use Skaven Blight Dinge and Celestra Gray just to quickly highlight the, um, the cables. Really, really fast. Nothing fancy. Just... That's it. That's the the gist of it. I'll slap a little bit onto my palette. I got too many paint pots on my desk right now. I gotta put them back. Honestly, uh, where? Well, let's put the paint right here. Keep it nice in view. Keep it in view. So, you know what? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, this is an older number one Artist Opus brush I'm going to use. But you can see how it's pretty tired. It's pretty sad looking on the front. The bristles are pretty, pretty toast. I'm just going to quickly give it a little bit of water, wipe it off. Uh, just with the residual dampness of the brush, I'm going to draw it through the paint. But as I do so, I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and make a chisel. You've probably seen me do this once or twice. That's too much water. You've probably seen me do this once or twice. Now the reason for it is because I'm going to apply it to the hoses to get the highlights started. But I want to do it kind of like an overbrush method. You can see here on the camera. See if I turn the brush, see it looks like it comes to a point. But then when I turn it, it's broad. That's what I'm talking about, like a little chisel. And I'm just going to quickly overbrush the area. Like a dry brush but not quite. If I get into any recesses or anything like that, we can always come back in with um, something like Nuln Oil or even the Black Contrast, um, Black Legion or Black Templar or whatever the heck it's called. Damn it, you know what, you know what paints I'm talking about. God darn it. Gold darn it, anyway. And so with this color, I'm just going to quickly lay this on. And that is it. That is all. Just like that. Just to put a quick little highlight on those hoses. Then I'm going to quickly grab some Celestra Gray. Did I even shake these? I didn't even shake them. Living dangerously. I'm just, I didn't even shake these paints yet. I just, ah, screw it. I'm just going to slap them down. So I'm going to take some Celestra Gray. I'm going to add it to that little dollop of Skaven Blight Dinge. Yeah, maybe not that much. Not a whole lot. I don't need to change the value that hard. And I don't need to come in with pure Celestra Gray. It's probably closer to a 50-50. Although it feels a bit more Celestra Gray than it does Skaven Blight. So, again, if you're consistent in your mixtures and when you do mix a lot, you can, <laughs> sir, mix a lot, uh, you can um, pretty much, you know, kind of see where you're going with these colors as far as like how far you're pushing them brighter or darker, or, you know, one end or the other. camera here yeah. 
making sure you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just hitting it just once. Trying to catch it in one brush stroke. See, it's a little heavy there on the one back end there. <coughs> Again, like I said, with these highlight colors, we can just simply come in and, you know, use like known oil or something and just knock the color down. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to go with pure Celestra Gray. And I'm just going to carefully catch some of the high points. Just a little bit. I'm not going to use too much paint. So you can see it right there. So a little bit of pure celestial gray. And let's grab that brush. I'm switching brushes here. Just my little fine detail, not fine detail, but it's a standard brush, but it comes to a really wonderful point. And all we're doing is we're gonna catch some of these high points here. Just like so. Just like that. See there. That's all we're looking to do. Like that. And the next. Oh, I do have non oil sitting here. Sweet. I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna use non straight up non oil. I'm gonna apply it to the hoses, and that way it goes black in those recesses again, just in case of some areas. Because I know I did hit them a little too heavily. And that's fine. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, we'll continue with this brush. So, I'm just gonna go. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll thin it down just a little bit. It'll take a little bit. Little drop of water. You can see there. Bristles are nice and swollen. Well, maybe a little more. There we go. That's the consistency I like. Yeah, that should be good. I'm going to apply it fairly generously into the hoses. Just like so. Just like that. You can see the hoses have separation in the in the things and everything like that. And that's it. That's all. That's all we gotta do. Hi there, Apostle Pat. Uh, what metallic did you use on the hoses and back canisters? Uh, I did not use a metallic on the hoses. That's just black with uh, a light gray. The canisters and other metallic elements, like like the glyphs and everything like that, and the gun barrels and the hammer, that's all done with, um, what the hell did I use? Iron Breaker and Stormhost Silver. And I laid those on top of Golden ca uh, Carbon Black. Just because these th this paint finishes uh, sort of glossy, so yeah, that's all. It really isn't entirely necessary as a lot of the gloss was knocked out when I did a bunch of shade washes because then I used um, Drakenhof Nightshade on some of the metal bits, thinned out, just to push a bit of a gradient. And then I used uh, Pterodon Turquoise, thinned out, to push a bit more color. And you can kind of see in the shadows on areas, it goes to a turquoise color. That's all the silver elements. All the silver elements have this turquoise color running on top. And then it was just a quick dry brush. Uh, I think I, did I use Necron Compound? I think I used Necron Compound. And then a slight edge of Stormhouse Silver. And that was it. That's it for the silvers. If you go to, <coughs> if you go to, um, I think two episodes previous of this one, I think it was Way of the Brush. 
just regular way of the brush and i was working on this guy and i started doing the silver bits and then yeah if you go to the previous episodes you'll see the process i did i did a bunch of the weathering last night the chipped armor and everything like that uh, i did the little gemstone type effect on the little orbs in the center of his chest and that is groin we also black lined a little bit oh i did the loop and his and the handle for his axe or his uh hammer oh and we did the hair last night as well we just quickly glazed in those highlights on that hair and everything that was it again i did not i have not meant to push this model this far as far as like spending time painting it i've only wanted to do basic um you know tabletop right just a good tabletop this is kind of going more higher tabletop this is not display standard not by any stretch but yeah this is a bit more time than i would rather spend but he is a character so you know why not right anyway uh we got to do the the uh, league symbol on here now does the white bar run on this side as well of his icon and does it occupy the entire facet or is there edges now i gotta look this up i gotta look this up real quick oh wait no i can just get my book <laughs> did i put my codex away shit i did all right i'll be right back uh entertain yourself all right so grab my codex turn to the color guides i just want to see how they often paint the league symbol is it on the entire armor face or is it like halfway okay like this big this big suit duder this one right here it's kind of in the middle but it's, it extends to the entire face of the armor plate. But that's not the dude we're painting here. We are painting. Holy crap. Where is it? There it is. Okay. It does not look like it. Or is it the entire face? Oh, it is the entire face. Okay. So, and it is over the side with the icon as well. So I'm doing that color scheme on this little duder and the white goes right to the bolts i don't know how well you guys can see that but yeah oh it's even on his knee too okay we'll paint one on his knee as well yeah we'll do that we'll do that all right do that um so next, now I was going to use, what color was I going to use? I wasn't going to use a pure, like, white gray. Because so I've already got Celestial Gray going on, and I don't want it to have the same feel. So I think I'm going to use, ooh, Shabti Bone. Good old, trusty, rusty, ooh, Shabti Bone. I want this to be a warm white. I don't want it to be cold white. I mean, I could do cold white. Eh. I'm going to give this a thorough mix as it's been sitting on my shelf for a while. Yeah, we're going to do it a shopty bone. Highlight the edges up with um, Flayed One Flesh. Flayed One Flesh? Yeah, Flayed One Flesh. Well, I guess I should do Screamy Skull, right? Doesn't really matter. I think they're both the same color. And then just a quick little dotting of white. Oh, and then we'll weather the symbol up a bit, so we'll probably do a little bit of patchiness of orange breaking up the lines a little bit. So it's not too neat. Again, his armor's a little bit chipped up, so... Yeah. Again. So, yeah, the symbol does extend right to the bolt heads, so it is the entire face that gets the uh, color. And as well as here. And it did show it on the face here as well around this icon and it's like a solid band I'll do this knee that's extending forward just because that knee well maybe we'll do that knee 
I was just I was just trying to look for the easier way out, but yeah, well, screw it. We'll do that, me. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess, right? All right. So we'll slap a little bit of Ushabti bone onto our palette. Shouldn't be too much. We'll probably have to lay this out uh, a few times. Just because this is a layer paint and I am going to thin it a little bit. Actually, we'll use a medium to thin it. I'll use some Lamian medium for all your Lamian needs. Just one drop. Freaking dingleberry on my brush. There we go. Do 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 do. Yeah, I like that. It's nice and smooth. Yep, it's smooth. All right. Jeez, did I not shake this enough? Pretty darn thin. Lord Krabby, sup Chris? Nice. You doing going for the radioactive look tonight? Uh, maybe. We talked about it in the last episode of possibly doing radioactive symbols on the ends of the canisters. It seemed like a fun idea. Uh, stands right about there. quiet it's because I'm concentrating uh, using up all my brain power to uh, to paint these all my brain power now then around the icon it's actually kind of small little space Yeah, 
that's all right chris what made you pick this league color scheme um i like the color scheme and i was you know i was trying to get it done on the day of the pre-order and yeah and so i i had picked it right away because it was the only color scheme that i thought was interesting and yeah was trying to get it done uh for the warhammer community article but just the way timing works i was unable to get it done in time so i decided screw it i'll just do a bunch of you know vlogs painting it you know so yeah hence this Actually, in my uh, my review of the Codex, uh, I talk about it, about deciding on this color scheme. Just filling that space in. Getting closer. Chris, uh, but I did score a couple of the free models on Saturday, if that counts. Yeah, sweet. Grim Darkness, I've seen a lot of painters that did the scheme. My guess is the orange as the primary color is very rare in official GW schemes. Um, I don't know, is it? Is orange rare? I'm trying, you got me thinking now. Because I'm sure a couple Space Marine chapters are probably uh, orange. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting color scheme. And apparently a lot of other painters thought it was interesting as well. Because a lot of painters painted the orange scheme. The, uh, the Trans-Hyperion Alliance, as this is commonly known. but yeah it was kind of interesting i mean with so many people doing the orange color scheme um if i if i had completed this because i plan to get like the whole box set done but yeah at a certain point though you kind of like just say ah oh, screw it i'll get it on the next one 
there always be another big release but anyway um yeah just going for the scheme i mean like if i had completed it my my models would have just kind of you know been white noise in amongst all the other friggin' models that were all painted orange <laughs> but that's fine Is it a solid bar or is it a broken up bar on the plates? Now I'm thinking that it's it's a solid bar. Damn it. Back to the book. Back to the book. Yeah, it's a solid bar. Damn it. God damn it. Oh, excuse me. I burped. Actually looks better solid. I mean once I get there, of course. is really wet so I'm just using it in a glaze fashion just to solidify up some of these edges here and smooth out the base coat as well Again, if I go quiet, because I'm concentrating. Got to concentrate. Use up all my brain power. You know, brain power, brain power.
while I'm at it, probably should just do that knee pad now as well. And draw a little straight line on it. Grim Dankness. Any plans of weathering this guy or going for a clean paint job? Uh, he is weathered. You can see here. Let me get it in focus. Yeah, you can see the edges are chipped and such. It's just a little bit. Not a heavy weathering. I'm not a big fan of like super heavy weathering on models. Yeah. Last episode, I um, I showed how I weathered everything. Episode uh, 139, for anybody who wants to go back and have a, have a gander. All right, so for doing a line, especially on a little space like that, because we're going to do that knee. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to use those bolts that are on his knee pad. I'm going to use those as guides. So even as I rotate the model around to kind of see what I'm doing, I'm going to use those as guides. Those are my way of knowing where I'm going with the brush. And then I'll build it out probably about a brush length out from the center, just to build thickness. And then I'll do the same on the other side as well. Just like that. See? Yes, I haven't done it up, but don't worry, we'll get there. Kevin Cabal! Oh, yes, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, weigh the brush and the last one or two getting projects done, uh, I've been working on this guy. Not that I meant to. I did not mean to take my time on this model. I did not mean to draw this paint scheme out or anything like that. Just got into the painting and yeah. happens sometimes it happens you just get into the moment you start to enjoy the the process bit hell maybe by the end of the episode we'll uh, we'll apply the transfer Feels like a straighter line now. Build a little bit more paint. Pretty straight ish. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, well, too bad. I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm going to need just a little bit more Bouchab de Bone, though. Just to, because we were late making that a solid presence on these shoulder pads here. So basically, I'm just coming in with a really thinned out color, glazing this last layer on. Just so I get a nice smooth finish. Build a 
Quite a bit of paint down. Straight enough. Again, I <laughs> I don't know why I'm fussing over these colors so hard because <laughs> like I'm just doing this to a tabletop. I'm not planning on you know entering this into any sort of competitions or anything. I do want to take some pretty pictures of it, but yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. All right, so Ushabti bone or flayed one flesh? No, screaming skull. I mean, screaming skull. There it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, because Screaming Skull and Flayed One Flesh, like, they're they're practically identical. Which one's which? You tell me. I'm going to mix my paint. You tell me which one's Flayed One Flesh and which one's Screaming Skull. Go. Pass on. Also, should I have a paint shake cam when I shake the paint? Do, 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 do. So with this color, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to establish some um, edge highlight, maybe a slight gradient, and then we're going to edge it in um, pure white, probably just at the lower ends, kind of like how we've been hi uh, highlighting stuff. Got a little bit of scream and skull. Put it here. Some scrimmage skull. Yeah, we'll use a little drop of medium. Just to thin it down just a little bit. Like that. Give that a little mix a -voo. Try to make sure that's thoroughly mixed. All right, back to work. So I'm gonna push the highlights downwards on spaces. And, well, mostly at the edges, I guess, and down. Oh, who's that? Centel Entorn? Thank you for the follow. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Now, the icon will be placed there, so it's going to obscure quite a bit of the work that we do there, so I'm not too worried about it. because we're going to um, weather those up in a bit anyway.
that. Face here. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Kind of, sort of. Sentinel. Figured why not? Just got done painting a uh, Slave to Darkness model. Now taking a break. Oh, cool. Do you uh, do you share your uh, work online, like Instagram or anything like that? Discord. I have a Discord as well. Feel free to join us, and you can share your work there as well. If you're the sharing sort of folk. I don't blame you if you don't feel like sharing. Some people just don't. Just don't want to. Don't want to do it. Couldn't be bothered. Oh, we gotta do the knee. Shit, I forgot all about the knee. Um, sometimes, mostly Discord. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a Discord. Uh, was that you that just joined it? I don't have my little thingies on. Yeah, there you go. Sentel. Sentel? Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, I only have one rule in the Discord. Don't be a dick. That's it. That's the only rule. You'll see there's various channels talking about various things. I don't have, um, you know, any hang-ups about language other than don't be a dick. That's it. Otherwise, just about anything goes. Just about. Yep, 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 yep. Now, just for a little bit of white. Uh, where's the white? Is that it? Nope, that's which Palette Witch Flush. When the hell was I using Palette Witch Flush? I need my white. We're going to use White Scar. Uh, normally, I'd probably use something like Ceramite White, but I'm going to use White Scar. Always got to give the Citadel pots a little bit of a shake. It's been sitting on my shelf for a bit. <clears throat> yeah, so Centel, uh, feel free to share, post whatever you whatever you like. Like I said, there's various channels, and you can talk about whatever, as well as miniature painting. So we're just gonna use some white scar. Uh, Are you going to throw some matte varnish on? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Like I said, feel free to join us. Share, don't share. Lurk, don't lurk. Doesn't really matter to me. All right. With this white, I'm going to switch over to a nice little small Rubeloff Zero, which is a really small, fine brush. And we're just going to put in just a couple little lines of white some of these edges here so for example like on the top edge here I'm just gonna lay a little bit of white down Maybe just like that. 
you know, pretty much just edging. It's pretty much all we're doing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just an edge highlight. And it doesn't really show up very well on camera. I have to back the light off a bit. Yeah, sorta. It's okay though. It's it's really bright. I wanted to be more of an off white rather than a cold white. And so yeah. shoulder pad Using the white also allows you a chance to clean up, neaten up some of the lines as well. One of the pictures does not want to post. Go figure. Yeah. It's kind of strange. A little bit odd. Let's do the last little bit. The knee. Catch that little rivet. Again, I'm not too worried if I make little boo-boos because I'm gonna weather up the edges anyway at this phase right here. So let's do that. For the weathering, or yeah, for the weathering essentially, I'm gonna take a uh, troll slayer orange, thin it down, just, uh, not even thin it down. I'm just gonna use it straight from, well actually I should thin it down just because I'm working with it really small and I don't wanna create like little bumps of paint. So I'm gonna take troll slayer orange with just a little bit of dampness of the brush just to thin it down just a bit and all we're looking to do is to create little um the impression that the paint the this this cream white color that we've created here or laid out um and just the impression that the paint is chipping right because so, we have chip paint elsewhere on the model so we're going to make it kind of look like it's it's got chipped edges so, for example, on this bottom leading edge, I'm just going to go maybe I'll go here. Yep, just 
a few spots. It doesn't have to be everywhere. What really makes sense to you? Just like that. Kind of see that. So some of you might be thinking, well, why the hell would you bother doing that after taking all that time to lay the lay the bone color down? And that's just, again, to, to keep running with the same idea. And it's easier to do the weathering, obviously, afterwards than trying to, you know, um, create this impression while you're doing it. I mean, you could, but, you know, work smarter, not, not harder. So this face allows you to kind of clean up some of the lines as well. You can see, yeah, that's all we're doing. Just making it look beat up. Just a little bit. Not heavily. Like I said, this is not like full-on battle damage and, you know, big chunks of his armor are missing or anything like that. Nothing like that. Again, it's really, really subtle. It's not, you know, really super intense. Just for the impression of that paint being chipped in some places. That's all we're looking for. Just for giggles, let's do kind of a scratch mark. Just one. Just one. And take a little bit of the paint. And for these, typically, I just draw them, start where I want them to get the end of the scratch, and then just go flick it in. That's it. Just one little scratch. Okay, maybe another one. Right. another little scratch again it's kind of hard because sometimes you want to get a little 
a little gun happy with your with your weathering and you just get carried away and next thing you know the whole thing is just beat the hell looking right but yeah I'm comfortable with that level of weathering on it I think that's fine okay for giggles let's let's put those um, those uh, radiation warning for that I'm going to use yeah, I'm gonna use these two colors I'm gonna use Averland sunset and you're yellow you're 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 you let's give him the uh, Averland sunset a shake you can start off with whatever uh, darker yellow you've got it doesn't really matter I like using Averland sunset for bases of yellow just because it is a base color and it just tends to uh, sit on top of more opaque colors more easily. So that's all. I'm not going to go with the full contrasty, um, you know, yellow and black on the ends. I'm going to go for just the yellow. So that's all we're going to do. And then if there's enough room, maybe we'll do a little weathering on them as well. Nah, probably not. <laughs> Um, I make no promises. All right, so let's grab a little bit of the paint and let's freehand in some radiation symbols. Um, yeah, I guess I should just use that brush. All right, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water. You can see the bristles are kind of swollen. Just to thin the color down a bit. I do want it more like the consistency of like an ink, like a contrast paint. <clears throat> I probably could try a contrast paint. I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in the lighter colors. Mind you, I mean like Magma Droth Flame. This is one of the new Citadels, uh, the contrast. Um, this one, actually, like that's what this base is. And it is bright. It's pretty darn bright. Do they have a yellow? They do have a yellow. Imperial fist. Yeah, see when I'm looking at it in the bottle though, it, it has more it has a bit of opaqueness, but ah. next time. Next time. Alright. So we're just gonna pick a direction and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a triangle pointing to the center and then try and evenly create that all the way around. So we're imagining where our center is. I'm trying to imagine something like that right there. <clears throat> Next one. The third, which would be, I guess I could have probably just sketched it. I probably could have. As I was beginning this, I just realized that I, I, there was probably an easy way I could have done it. Whereas basically I would just draw a Y. Alright, yeah. I don't know how well that shows up on camera. But anyway, basically I could have drawn a Y. And then just built the shape out from that. Now I'm just going to fill in the color. not looking too bad eh the glare on the from the light because they're so bright you can kind of see looks like little radiation symbols on the top eh 
<laughs> it's kind of fun. All I'm doing is I'm using thinned out paint and then just filling in the color and slowly build to my effect. I'm not trying to accomplish it in one stroke. But I do want to get more of that rounded edge. I want to get a little more color on that. Just so it kind of completes the overall look of the shape. Oh well. Did it now. like a little radiation symbol on there or the beginnings of one <laughs> honestly I kind of like it <laughs> I'm going to do it to the other one as well <laughs> alright so when I was saying before was an easier way to, to work this out and I was just going to just draw a Y and then basically fill it out on each side of the Y. Or wait, would that be the wrong way? Oh shit, that might be the wrong way. Now nah, screw it, then I guess I'm gonna do it the way I initially did it. Where I just start off with a triangle and work my way in. Just imagining a thirds, something like that. And then you just start filling in the shape a little bit. Like so. Turn. Oh, shoot, that's too far. Oops. This was more right there. That's okay. I just come in with a little bit of silver and just correct that. Not an issue. <laughs> it's kind of a laugh but it's kind of cool <laughs> just adding a bit more water to this too much water apparently This one got a little messed up on that on that side of it. I gotta correct it. Gots to, Mister. Mm-hmm. 
for whatever reason, going all the way to around to the lip of the container makes it feel a little bit more authentic. That's the right word. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to grab some silver, clean up that little spot, and then we can continue on. Well, I guess I can probably just move on to the other part of the yellow. Yeah, we'll move on to the next yellow. <clears throat> I was going to clean it up, but I figured, you know what, if I make any other boo-boos, and then I'll just wait till the end and then just clean up the mistakes. So next, I'm going to use Uriel Yellow. And this is just to create a little bit of highlight on those uh, areas, on the little yellow icon portions. I'm just mixing the color. Mix, 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 mix. Mix, mix, mix. All right. It's like I said. Here you yell. You 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 And we'll grab our detail brush. Now we're going to build the highlights up to the high point. So the highlights will go up on these higher sections over here rather than down on these parts. But who knows? I might get silly and put some edge highlights in or something. Maybe I'll just edge highlight it. Oh, uh, no. Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe I should. Let's just go for the straightforward. shows up on camera but yeah the upper portion has more yellow to it it's a little bit intense that's okay you know on the bottom portion maybe I'll throw in just the tiniest little indication of a highlight then to cut it down a bit I'm just gonna come in just on this bottom edge here just on the edge just the, the indication of Now I have thinned this color down a bit. I'm wondering if I should work with it more like a glaze and just kind of slowly build to the gradient. Nah, screw it. Ain't got time for that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's get that again. Nothing too hilarious. So now we're going to come back with some. Stormhouse Silver. I'm going to give this a thorough mix. And we'll just clean up a little, couple of little boo-boos. really going to thin it down just because I want it to sit on top of the yellow because even the yellow will show through this
this down just a couple times. That's fun. And fun is fun. did the little nuclear hazard markings on it the nuclear I think that's fun on camera it's kind of hard to see because the lights bounce right off of it but yeah now what does that remind you of the canisters with the little nukes on the end what movie what movie does that remind you of okay next uh, what time what time are we at oh man we got enough time to start working on the base i think so we started off with dried bark for the base my goal is well my, my plan i shouldn't say my goal my plan is i'm going to use a grillian earth on most of the flat area and then i'll probably put like a tuft or two on the base <laughs> i'll bet you can't guess what the color of the rim is going to be <laughs> So dryad bark, um, and I want to go with agrillion earth as the main color. What is agrillion earth? Agrillion earth is more like bane blade brown, no? So we probably could just do like a wet blend. You guys want to do some wet blending? Sure you do. So, let's grab. Uh, is it Bane Blade Brown? I can't remember now. Grilling Earth. Where the hell is my Grilling Earth? Go oh, darn it. All right. Yeah. So Grilling Earth is that color, right? So that color is more like this color. Oh, Xandri Dust? That's what, Xandri Dust is a little lighter. So, Xandri Dust isn't quite it. I mean, it's not bad. It's a good approximation. Talaran Sand? Nope. Uh, Talaran Sand. Where the hell is my Bane Blade? It's a meshy desert. I already did Xandri Dust. What the hell am I doing? It. No. Where the hell is Bane Blade Brown? Oh, here it is. Yeah, Bane Blade Brown is close. What's up from Bane Blade Brown? Uh, oh, Ricard Flesh. Is it Ricard Flesh? No, Ricard Flesh is too light. So, yeah, Bane Blade Brown is the closest color. If you know of a closer color in Citadel, let me know. But I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to mix that with Dryad Bark uh, just to kind of get close to um, when I lay, eventually lay this down. I don't know if we'll do that to, tonight. Well, maybe we'll get to it tonight. Let's give it the Bane Blade Brown mix. That's where I like to hide. Big dark bark. 
Drag Bark. Um, Pickert? Pickert? You seem to be channeling Bob Ross's beat the brush rapidly on the <laughs> legs of the easel technique when you're cleaning your brush. Um, I've, I've always kind of done that. I always use a, um, like a pickle jar, like a jar of water for my rinsing. And that's just because it's, it's got a lot of length to it. And when I rinse, right, I don't go very far into my water when I rinse. So it does sound a bit aggressive, but yeah. But when I do clean my oil paint brushes, it's pretty much the same way. You beat the devil at them. You beat them like you, they owe you money. All right. So we're going to do a wet blend. We... I'm going to take both Dryad Bark and Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to slap those onto the palette. And then really quickly, I'm just going to move through the Bane Blade Brown and then just quickly uh, feather in the uh, Dryad Bark. I know I just said a bunch of things there, but it's a wet blend. It's a wet on wet blend. So I'm just going to grab a healthy little knot there, slap it onto the palette. Bane Blade Brown. And we'll use this brush. Down. All right, so really quickly, I'm just gonna go like this right here, just like that. And then with the dry bark, we just come in really fast. We just blend those two together like that. If we're not completely happy with that, we just come back in with the baby brown and we blend it again. In fact, that's probably a better way to do it. Building down to this color. Just like that. It just creates that slight little transition. You just create that little blend like that. It's really rough. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to go for any golden demon like standards here. I'm just, you know, trying to get this freaking model painted <laughs> so I can move on to the rest of the squads.
Lord Crabby. Taking off? Alrighty, dude. Later. Later, later. Later, later. again. Work. Stand a brush, take some Bain Blade Brown. I'm just going to establish some of these um, edges on these little craters inside the base. I guess we can just do some edge highlight in this gas as well.
I don't have enough color right under his foot. Some more definition on some of these colors here. Should we? Oh, yeah, we build a little more highlight. Okay. Um, I think that's it for the rock, really. I mean, I guess we could probably do a light dry brush on it. Um, yeah, okay, we'll dry brush it. We'll give it a quick dry brush. Just a really quick one. For that, we'll use Tyrant Stone. Where's Tyrant Stone? Tyrant Skull, excuse me. Tyrant Skull. It's pretty darn light. I mean, here's here's the Bane Blade Brown. That's the bright color on the base, and Tyrant Skull. Using Tyrant Skull, it looks kind of yellowish on camera, but it's actually more closer to Flayed One Flesh, a little bit. Ushabti Bone, yeah, it's more like Ushabti Bone. <clears throat> Grab our trusty, rusty small dry brush. I didn't really worry about painting the grit because I figured I was going to cover that with a grillian earth anyway. Just like that. Yeah, I'm not too worried about this stuff here because I'm like, that's going to get hit with Grillian Earth. Alright. Um, what was next? Well, we can lay down some Grillian Earth, or we can apply the transfer. 
What do you guys think? Transfer? Finish the base. Okay, you twist my arm. We'll do. We'll finish the base. <laughs> I, I don't even think I gave anybody a chance to answer there. <laughs> We're doing it live. We're doing it live. All right. So I'm going to use Grillian Earth on the base. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this uh, for basing, just because it's quick, it's easy, it gives us a nice, really easy effect. You, you basically don't have to do anything with this stuff. The only thing is, is that once I lay it down, we're setting the model to dry, and so we're not going to touch it. Let's give it a nice good shake. I've got my spatula tool. Let's go to town. Shouldn't actually take too much. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that's a nice big glob right there. Look at that. That's a big, healthy glob. Just gonna go right out like that. Now, for the crackle medium, in my experience, it is best to just lay it on heavy and thick. really hard not to hit the model. Again, anywhere that looks a little wonky, we can always fix when we get to the tough portion. Bring down tufts. Just using my finger to wipe the excess off. Just a little bit more, and that'll be it. That's too much. <laughs> Oops. Oops, that's too much. There we go. There we go. There we go. Just make that nice and neat. Now, if you find that you got any of the material anywhere you don't want it, you can just quickly grab a brush, preferably clean, and you can just wipe the excess away with a paintbrush. Just damp. Just like that. here we'll pull this away just like that this starts to look a little bit like sand dunes or something these ones might be a little tougher no nope, it's not too bad Side. Just feather that off so it feels a little more natural. Just like that. Just kind of blend it in. Essentially, because I mean, like the, the, the technical is just 
a paint with crackle medium added. It's just a medium. But anyway, well, I guess we don't really have to worry too much about the base because I guess we could get to the transfer. Oh, that means we need to have to dig up the transfer though. Okay. I guess we're not doing it. <laughs> I guess we're going to end her there. What time are we at? Oh, it's been an hour and 40, so yeah. Uh, is there any last questions from anybody? I know everybody's been really, really quiet. That's fine. It's kind of late. What is it, Wednesday? It's 10.30 my time. Anybody have any parting thoughts? No? I don't know. We got a bit done, though, didn't we? We got the shoulder... Uh, league symbol laid out. We got the base. Was that it? Oh, we did the uh, the nuclear uh, markings on the on the canisters. It's kind of hard to see there. Just for gigs, right? It's just for gigs. I mean, we could have went black on the ends. I suppose we could, but I kind of like just the the yellow, like looking at it. In, like at arm's length yeah I like kind of like a yellow and the silver as opposed to doing a black because then if it was really really easy to see uh, it would feel like the mistakes would become more apparent whereas like when you're looking at this you can see those are hazard marks you can see the triangles I could really kind of finesse it more but again I'm spending that much more time on the model <laughs> This was supposed to just be tabletop, and here I am going to all these lengths for this guy. He is fun, though. It's a fun model. Um, and these new Leagues of Votan, I mean, they're just too darn fun. Okay, well, seeing as how there's uh, everybody's asleep at the wheel or something, uh, we're going to end her there. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and um, yeah, what else? Oh, I am going to, on YouTube. I am going to be turning on the memberships, so be sure to check back. Clayton Tate, there's a name I haven't read in a bit. That lad has some big hands. Yeah, well, he's got like a big shield arm thing. His hands are inside. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can see on the inside there. You can see his little hand in there. Yeah, it's like he's holding like a double twin linked bolter gun thing, and then his little hands are holding the the hammer. But anyway. We're done. You guys can go back to your regularly scheduled lives. <laughs> or whatever it is. I don't know. Dun, 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 I'm going to have a drink of water. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, hi. Oh, hi.